welcome to season premiere of season two, Cooking with Food. I'm here on the island of Enchantment, Puerto Rico, on the island of the beaches. Today I'll be showing you a typical lifestyle with the typical Puerto Rican. Follow me. Ah, uh, the island of Puerto Rico. Where we last left off at the season one finale of Cooking with Food, I was busy escaping from the out of control plot and it lost its sense of direction and focus. Rather than providing an end goal for me and my show, I had become distracted by mysteries and questions. All a side effect of my insecurities of what I wanted to do with my show and myself. So I decided to visit my homeland, the place of my blood and my soul, my people, Puerto Rico. There I hoped to recapture the essence of creativity and ingenuity that would inspire me to continue to cook and inspire others to laugh at my humiliation. Of course, the dishes I would find would be unknown to man, and I didn't know where to start. So I went to the beaches of Piñones, where I decided to try the most simplest but tastiest dishes of all. Good old fashioned street food. Now the choices were endless there. From bacanaito, chicharrones, sorritos, empanadillas. I ultimately decided to go good old classic Al Capone. Joey exterior with seasoned meat. This is the heart of the island, around the coast. Turn it off, you need to try this. In my near few hours there, I rediscovered what it meant to cook. You don't cook for yourself or even for others. You cook because you can. And food is a necessity for survival. So with that hard-learned lesson, I traveled back in time to where it all began. That's okay, that's stupid. Of course, I didn't know. Uh, from Puerto Rico, I learned one recipe, and that was the Dali Mahi, called after the famous chef, Mahi. Now, of course, <clears throat> uh, this is a beautiful dish based off of the Mahi Mahi fish, which, fun fact, Mahi Mahi is a type of fish. So, of course, we require many, many ingredients some of which are hard to get if you live on an inland coast, like I do. Now making dali mahi consists of three phases. That is, the sauteing the fish, making the pineapple reduction sauce, and the Tabasco mayo sauce. I usually start off with the pineapple preserve reduction sauce, because that takes the longest to reduce down, and you can just leave it in the background simmering while you work on the other two phases. So I always find it best to start that last. So you want to go ahead and throw in your cup of chicken broth into a, a pot on top of the stove and throw in all of the preserves you have. The key here is that the more you add, the thicker your sauce will be, which I personally find much more appealing. Then you want to go ahead and season it with a pinch of salt, and the main star of this aspect of the dish is going to be the fresh parsley. I didn't have any fresh parsley here on hand, but essentially that's going to enrich the flavors of the pineapple of this sauce. Throw in a tablespoon of butter, you just want to stir that up and let everything melt and mix and add more preserves, seeing how thick you want it and essentially you'll want it to come to a boiling point such as this. At this point you can leave it here simmering for a while, just keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't get out of hand or add in more preserves if you like, like I am doing here. But other than that, you're essentially done with this part, just let it simmer, reduce down to a nice sauce. Now for our mayo tabasco sauce, 
we're gonna wanna go ahead and do one tablespoon of mayo for every three teaspoons of Tabasco sauce. And we're making six fillets here, so we should go ahead and at least make two batches, just to be safe. So with the sauce done, let's get to the final thing. You wanna take your fish fillets, you wanna salt and pepper them on both sides and throw them onto a already hot pan with some olive oil. And basically, you just want them to cook on each side for two to three minutes. You don't wanna overcook them for, for the most part. I mean, it's okay cook them, I mean that's what basically what it's doing, but we just want to go ahead and cook the outsides for the most part, because we're going to need the rest of the cooking in the oven. So pull it off the pan once they're cooked somewhat nicely on the outside, and we're going to cook the top with that Tabasco mayo sauce that we made, alright? And then we're going to put some sliced almonds, that's right, sliced almonds, that's a beautiful crunch to it. Once you got all your fillets ready and done, it's okay to make a mess. You throw them in your 350 degree oven. You close that sucker up. You set a timer for 10 golden minutes. In the meantime, you can check on your sauce. You can add more thickness to it, let it reduce more. Once it's ready, get your plate. You wanna go ahead and serve up your good old sauce on the, uh, on the center. You see mine was a little liquidy, but I'm fine with that. Some juices to clean up after. Get the filet out of the oven, scoop it off, the tray if you're able to, but if not, it's okay, we all have hands. We'll place it gently on top of the pineapple sauce, and voila, there it is. It's great for any meal, especially with lo mein or any other dishes I'll be teaching in the future. That's right, spoiler alert, carrots. And yeah, this is a really weird video, I just recorded everything on voiceover. I don't know where I'm going to go after this, maybe I'll go to Russia. Maybe I'll find something special there, some snow or something. I'm tired. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. I'll see you next time on Cooking with Food. Where's the record button to stop this? Thank you.